Hello, I'm Hindul Sen Gupta. I never imagined that one day I would be making such a video about my alma mater, Columbia University. I had some wonderful days at Columbia University. I was a student there and I loved my time there. That beautiful campus, gorgeous Morningside Heights, the wonderful cafes, and of course, hours and hours in Butler Library, that grand old library those monumental bookshelves and of course the place where Baba Sahib Ambedkar himself studied. India has a deep connection with Columbia University. I was very fortunate to get a scholarship to study there. And yet today what is happening at Columbia University is extremely dark. The current protest that began on the issue of Palestinian freedom really has turned into something very deeply hostile and sinister. It seems that these are these protests, so to speak, are no longer led only by students. There are many outsiders who have infiltrated these protests. There are masked outsiders who are on campus in Colombia threatening to kill Jews, calling for the slaughter of Jews, supporting and raising slogans to support October the 7th when so many Israelis were butchered by Hamas, supporting Hamas. All of this is happening inside Columbia University. The protesters say they've taken over, in a sense, Columbia University. This is deeply, deeply disturbing to someone like me. I come from a very poor household and I never thought I would get a scholarship to go to an Ivy League institution. So when I got a scholarship to go to Columbia University, it was truly thrilling for me. There are millions of people like me. Every year, tens and thousands of students from across Asia and from India travel to America and to the West. But the Columbia University example shows that the polarization, poison and divide is destroying the finest academic institutions there. More than 268,000 Indian students traveled from India to America to study in 2022-23. Many such students, potential students today sitting in India, are looking at what's happening across campuses, especially at Columbia University, and asking themselves, how safe are we really? If this can happen at Columbia University, an Ivy League university at the heart of New York, and it seems that NYPD can do nothing, how safe are we going to be? What about those thousands of students, many of whom are Columbia students, who are spread across university campuses in America and elsewhere in the West, who genuinely want to study, who have got scholarships, whose parents have really struggled to find money, who may have raised loans to go and study there. What's going to happen to those people? Are their careers, are their dreams going to be ruined by these protests? Some people talk about Colombia's long history of protests and also about the Vietnam War, but this is not about that. This is something very different, very polarizing and very sinister. Ivy League institutions are being infiltrated in a manner that we have never seen before. Some of the best institutions in the world, in England, in America, across Europe, and perhaps also in other parts of the world. Columbia University must ask the question, how many Indian students watching this will want to come there again? How many Asian students would want this? Today it's about the issue of Palestine. Tomorrow it could be something else. What about tomorrow the issue is India-Pakistan? What about if Khalistanis want to protest like this and threaten Indian students and talk about killing Indian students and killing Indians? Will that be acceptable? Who will protect Indian students? These are questions that many, many people are asking today. Many of them have actually personally asked these questions to me as a former student. So American institutions and Western institutions must ask the question, what is their future going to be? Many of them, by the way, actually depend to a large extent for their finances on the fees paid by foreign students.
where are those foreign students come from going to come from if this is the kind of protest and this is the kind of sinister direction protests take the question to ask is very simple can columbia university show us that there is a red line there is a line beyond which this cannot be tolerated so many lives of students from various parts of the world cannot be put at risk just because some students want to protest on one particular thing there could be conflict in other parts of the world tomorrow will columbia and other universities accept exactly the same kind of protest if that happens are they going to take sides are they going to fight pitched battles are they going to you know allow students and others wearing masks covering their faces to call for the killing of one particular set of people one particular set of students <laughs> There is no doubt that Jewish students are hugely under threat at Columbia University today. But the question is today it's the Jews, tomorrow it could be someone else. Especially from Asia, a lot of Asian students would be asking this question. I know that a lot of Indians are asking this question. There must be a red line. There has to be a red line. But who's going to draw that red line? That is the question. There is a bigger question. Western academia depends in large parts in many countries in the around the world on students from around the world flocking there and paying very high rates, especially the top institutions. But in that deal, they also accept that they will keep these students safe, their minds and bodies safe. These students will get the best quality education so that they can nurture their dreams and give back to those countries and to their homeland. All this is being put at risk in these sinister, dark, extremely violent protests. This sort of thing has happened before in Berkeley and other places. America is deeply polarized and that polarization has entered every classroom. And now not only that, these classrooms, these students are bringing polarization from around the world as if the polarization in America was not bad enough, as if that poison was not bad enough. Poison from around the world is being poured into these classrooms and campuses. And the fights that are happening elsewhere are happening on campus. This really needs to end. For American and Western academia to have a future, this must end. And for many, many students in the global south who dream of one day studying in places like America, in Britain, in other parts of the world, they want this to end because otherwise their dreams cannot come true. Their ambitions to study at the best universities around the world cannot come true. Finally, the question of what education really means at some of the best institutions in the world must be debated today. Education is supposed to open our minds. We go to universities to learn how to think through various prisms, through various angles. We try to learn how to see the arguments of someone else. But if going to university means that you're going to be bullied by people to only choose one side and if you don't there could be threats even to kill you that's not education that's fundamentally against the basic values of education that education cannot be acceptable to any sane person no doubt the cause of palestinian statehood is an important one no doubt the violence that's happening in gaza is terrifying no doubt there is a huge political problem there. But there must be a line to what extent even a legitimate student protest and what shape and form it can take in campus. The idea that campuses should be run over. Everybody must suffer. All dreams and careers must die. 
all classes must be stopped. There must be raging battles, there must be fights with police, there must be threats for violence, towards violence. All of this is not education. Therefore, Colombia must think very carefully what it does next, as must all important Western academia. This is an important moment when they need to stand up and be counted. This cannot go.